Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In this episode I'm going to show you how you can take your forms to the next level. So this morning I met with one of the college counselors who's been using a Google form to collect information for teachers to write recommendation letters uh, for their students. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how this is sort of how this works and show you how you can sort of mimic this idea of taking the form to the next level uh, by adding some features to it. So basically I have here a simple a simple form um, with a few questions name, teacher, earliest deadline, and then a couple paragraph uh, questions to be answered by the student. So what I'm going to have happen is where it says teacher, this is going to be a drop-down menu that is populated through the response sheet. So I have a sheet on the response sheet that has a list of all the teacher names. Um, so I'm going to actually have this form draw upon that column to populate this question. So that's one goal. The next goal is to have it that when I hit the submit button, this piece of information is automatically emailed to the net to the teacher that is selected in this drop down menu okay so it may sound confusing and difficult but it's actually quite simple i'm going to walk you through the steps to do this so step 1 is simply to open the response sheet and create a new sheet along the bottom called teachers and this is here where you want to list all of your teachers and their email addresses. That's it. Once you've done this, you're right where you should be. So now we'll come back to this form. Now there is an add-on for Google Forms. Um, it's located just right next to Tools here in Add-ons. It's called Form Ranger. And what this add-on does is allows you to pull column data and use it in either or either a drop down question drop down menu question or a i believe a multiple choice question um, and a check boxes question so if i launch this after i've installed it it's going to give me some instructions on the right hand side Now what I want to do is populate this teacher question, which is right here, with values from my response sheet. So here's how I do that. I'm going to tick this box, and I'm going to select a new values list. So here it's looking up all of my spreadsheets. And I'm actually going to choose, this is my college recommendation letter response sheet. I'm going to select it. And now it's asking me for which sheet in the spreadsheet. Well, I definitely don't want the actual response data. I want the teacher sheet. So I'm going to click here and click teachers. And now I want to make sure I'm also selecting the teacher header, right? Your columns have to have headers in order for Form Ranger to work. So once I'm happy with my list, so these are the lists of my teachers that I want to be available for selection in that drop down. I can click Next. And I'm just going to give it a name, I'm going to call it Teachers. And I'm going to save and populate the question. Great. And I'm also going to uh, turn on these triggers at the bottom that each time a form is submitted, it will auto populate or repopulate. Um, so if I've added any new teachers or people to that list, um, they will automatically be added to the form question as well. So I'm going to turn this one on and turn this one on. So every hour, it's actually just going to refresh on its own to repopulate. Um, 
this is you also have a refresh questions button right here and as you can see already these are my these are my teachers right here 20 teachers and they're available in the form so if I go to my live form again we'll notice now that I can select okay so we've accomplished that goal of getting teachers into the drop-down menu. The next goal is linking these teacher names to their corresponding email addresses. Okay. Now this will be done also in the response sheet um, using a combination of uh, functions and uh, add-ons as well. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. So here we are. We don't have any data in here yet. So let's actually submit something um, just to give us some data to play with as a sample. So I'm going to submit my name. It's Richard. And say my teacher is teacher1. Earliest deadline, we'll say, is June 24th. Yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to copy and paste all of this there. And I'm going to hit Submit. So now I have some data here on my first row, actually row two of my, my spreadsheet. So. What I need to do now is I want to turn teacher1, I want to turn this into an email address in another column, okay? So I'm actually going to create a new column, and I'm just going to say teacher email, all right? This is a brand new column that I'm actually going to create, and I'm going to put in a VLOOKUP function. So I can hit the equal sign, VLOOKUP. And when you do this, it gives you sort of the syntax for what you need to put in here to make this work properly. So the search key is basically the keyword. Okay. So in this case, what I'm looking for is what's over here in C2, right? I'm going to look in at C2 because I'm looking for teacher1. That's the name that I'm looking for. I can hit comma and then the space bar. Now the range. Okay, now this is where am I looking for teacher one? Well, remember we created this second sheet. Um, so this is where I want to look for teacher one over here. And I'm actually going to create the range right here. And draw a box just around the range that I want. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit comma. Now the index question, this has to do with the distance from the first column selected, all right? So column one, the index would be one, all right? But if I put a one in here right now, it's going to bring back teacher one. What I don't want is I don't want teacher one. I want the email address. So in this case, my index is going to be two. So I'm going to put in a space bar and a 2, and then I hit a space again. And now, because I'm interested in only exact matches, I'm going to put in the word false here. Okay. If I were looking for approximate matches, uh, then I could put in the word true. But this is, I'm looking for only exact matches. So I'm going to type in the word false, close my parentheses, and hit the return key or enter. So great. I successfully converted my teacher name into an email address. Now, this is great for one row, but the issue we're going to run into is that we need this formula to copy down. All right. So there is an add-on called copy down, which allows you to take a formula or I mean a function like this and have it copy down each time a form is submitted.
But now if I copy this down as is, what's going to happen is this range is going to move from teachers A2 to B21 to teachers A3 to B22. So the range is actually going to move with it. So the first thing I want to correct with this VLOOKUP is making sure that my range does not move when I copy down this function. And you can do that by putting in a dollar sign be before the letter and the number. So I'm going to do that. And actually, column B, we can actually just let that go on to infinity. So that way, when we add new, uh, new names, it'll pick them up automatically. So we're just going to go like that. And let's just put in a dollar sign here. Perfect. All right. So notice it didn't change anything here. But all we did was make sure that our range does not shift down uh, as the formula copies down. OK. So now let's go ahead and install the uh, copy down add-on. Here it is. Again, you can get this from the add-on store if you haven't installed it already. And this is great because it's a simple on-off switch. So all you have to do is literally um, turn it on. It's going to locate where you have functions in your spreadsheet. And then you have to decide if you want to paste that as, as in a value or just as the function. And in this case, I'm going to paste it down as the value because I want that function to work on each new row of data. So that's why I'm not going to check this box right here. So I'm going to leave it as a function. And I'm just going to save it. And you'll get this purple box of the copy down status. So each time it's been copied down, you'll get a confirmation here in row I. Um, that it's been copied down. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and just submit another recommendation to test the copy down. So we'll say this person is Jerry. Oops, I got to refresh this form. Jerry. This time we're going to send it to teacher two. So now we're going to test our VLOOKUP as well to make sure it's pulling the right email address. And we'll say that's the deadline. We'll put in some text. Hit submit. And you can see that the copy down formula um, has successfully um, copied down and my VLOOKUP also, my, my VLOOKUP was copied down and converted teacher2 into the teacher2 email address. Let me just do one more to make sure, confirm that this is working as planned. So there you have it. So it is actually correctly attributing the right email address to the teacher. So now that we have this email address column, we want to be able to send it, to send this information in an email that's easily read. It's not, we don't want to send the spreadsheet. So we're going to send this information in an email merge using another add-on called Form Mule. So to install that one again, you can get it from the add-on store. I have it right here. I'm just going to launch it. And uh, the source sheet containing my data is the form responses. So this is what the student is submitting. And I want this to go directly to the teachers uh, when the form is submitted. So that's why I'm going to turn this trigger on. 
And in my case, I'm not interested in logging the case number or the URL for each submission. So I'm going to now move on to the template. And these are just some conditions I can, I can work with. I just tend to leave this as is if I'm only going to use one template. And I want to send it for all rows of data. I want, I want them all to be available to me to put into my email. So I can just save these settings. Notice I've added another column into my spreadsheet. So this is the send status of the email. And now I can go ahead and edit the template. Now this is quite intuitive. I really like this little UI. Um, so the first thing is, is where am I sending this letter of recommendation? Well, I want to send it to the teacher, right? So this is the teacher email column, right? It's going to pull the email address from that column. I can give it a, a subject line. So uh, I can call it a letter of recommendation request for, and then I could take the student name, which is right here. And then I can say, dear, and this is the teacher name. I just remove dear teacher. Then I can say the student name. So in this case, it could be Jerry has uh, asked you for a letter of recommendation. Here are some things about Jerry, about him or her, we'll say, that could help you. write this letter. Now below all this, I could just put in the questions that were asked. And then at the bottom, maybe I want to include, include the earliest deadline as well, maybe in between. There we go. So now I've formatted an email that is going to be sent um, to the teacher, including information regarding this letter of recommendation. So now I hit preview and send all. <clears throat> so here is a summary of what's going to be sent. Um, this is the template name. This is the the source of the information. This is the subject of the email. Dear teacher one, Richard has asked you for a letter of recommendation, blah, blah, blah. And this is the second one. And when I'm satisfied with it, I can click send now. And I get a summary of uh, what's happened here. So all three emails have been sent successfully um, to the respective teachers that have been asked to provide these letters. So that's about it. Again, just to recap, we first created a very simple form. We then populated the teacher drop-down menu from a column in this spreadsheet here. We converted this teacher name into their email address right here. And then we used form uh, mule to actually send the response data to the teacher. Again, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching me take this form to the next level and uh, I look forward to you working on your own forms. Thanks for watching.